Hi guys, Fraser from the Rugged Guide here, and uh, today we're looking at a Defender buying guide. Now, I've got a vehicle here that's been stripped, and the reason that's good is because it gives me the opportunity to show you all the areas that you want to be looking for. If you're going to be looking at buying your own Defender, there'll be some areas that you really want to make sure are right. Uh, I'm going to go through a few details, I'm going to show you the areas to concentrate on, so if you go and view a vehicle, you can have a quick whiz round and really know in your own mind and your own heart that it's a vehicle worth getting, because these vehicles are getting hard to come by, and you don't want to be wasting your money on something that uh, you're going to have to give back, or that's uh, not going to be what you want. So here we go, we're going to make a start. So this is a key area on a Defender. Now, uh, this is the bulkhead, and just below where the windscreen would be, and these corners always rot out. And it's unlikely that your Defender that you're looking at has escaped that. Now, you may have, uh, it may have had some repairs done, or it may just be exposed. If it's like that, don't worry, it can be repaired. You just get one of these repair panels and actually weld it up. And you can see if it's been done already, because there'll be a weld joint here, and this will sit flush, rather than it be recessed like that. But with that in place, it's, uh, it's a good repair panel. But what you want to make sure is that hasn't just been stuck over a load of corrosion because it's going to keep coming through. So if you can, go around the back, have a look and see if the corrosion's been dealt with from the back as well. And uh, you'll have a better idea of the extent of the, of the repair or of the damage itself or the corrosion. Another key area you're going to be wanting to look at is the chassis numbers. Now, on a Defender, you've got two areas. Uh, on later Defenders, you've also got a third area, but let's just focus on these first two. Now, you'll see here, we've actually got uh, a VIN plate. Now, that's really important. Make sure that it's not been tampered with, and you've got a chassis number that's printed on here. And that needs to match the chassis number that's actually on the chassis. Now, you'll be able to check that, because underneath the vehicle, on the driver's side, or the right-hand side, if you like, on the chassis just here, it's actually stamped in. So make sure that's there. Now occasionally you'll see that there's a steering guard or something fitted and you won't be able to see it, but you might just be able to see the top of the letters, but always be wary if it's been covered up um, for a reason. And if it's, uh, if it's you know, a genuine seller, if you've looked at all the vehicles, that's the one thing that you want to be sure of. Don't be afraid to ask the seller to drop that steering guard so you can check the chassis number. It's really important. It'll be stamped on here, and I'll show you that in just a second so you've got an idea exactly where it is and make sure it matches the one on the uh, servo plate of the brake, just on here. So looking at the front of the vehicle here, to check the chassis number, you'll be coming down here, going in and reading it there. You can just see it. If you need to get a little bit of dust off the floor, just wipe it on there, you'll be able to sit, read the number better. And actually, if you take a picture of it with your phone and then zoom in, you'll get a better eye. It's much easier to check the number there than uh, try and read it off by your eye. So take a picture, make sure it's good, and also make sure it corresponds with the one that's on the VIN plate here. Now, if you've got a 300 TDI or later, you'll also find there'll be a little plate just in the windscreen, and it's normally riveted onto this plate here. Now, if it's come off, don't worry, because that does happen, um, because obviously when the windscreen gets replaced, they go brittle and they can break off. Don't freak out if it's not there, just make sure the other two match. But if it is there, that's just another guarantee or another reassurance that the vehicle's okay. So a lot of defenders can suffer really badly from corrosion on top of uh, the bulkhead just below the windscreen. Now generally there'd be a foam strip that runs between this bulkhead section here and the windscreen and that can trap water and so what you'll find is there'll be corrosion all in here. Now with these flaps lifted up you'll be able to see underneath to make sure there's no corrosion around here. Again, it's repairable but it does cost money and it's not cheap. And this is another key area is the rear cross member. I'll show you from the outside as well but just looking in, this is how you actually inspect any potential vehicle. Um, you're going to have a wheel arch so it's going to be covered up. Make sure you take a torch and have a good look at this area here. Now these are replaceable so it's not the end of the world if it's been done. What you want to be looking out for is um, someone who's done a bad job or someone who's trying to cover something up. Um, it's very easy to fiberglass these up, cover them in wax oil. You don't want to be poking around because they're all sticky and gooey as a, as a prospective buyer. But don't be afraid, you know, have a little look, make sure uh, that it's solid. And you can check this by looking at the inside. That's really a really key area um, of, of the vehicle. So at the back of the Defender, you're going to see this huge steel cross member. Now, it's a really key point because uh, they corrode really badly. Mud gets trapped inside them. They rot from the inside out. And people do try and cover that up with uh, fiberglass, etc., which isn't great, and it will be an MOT failure. But also, if you're towing off the vehicle, it's really key that this is very sound and is very solid, because uh, that's going to be a problem if uh, that you ever have to tow anything or if you get recovered from it. So make sure this is all good. Now, if it's not good, um, and it might obviously be not good, which is not a problem because they can be replaced, as we said before. Um, you know, you can replace a third of the chassis from the back. 
um, onwards, uh, and that includes the spring hangers and everything as one piece. But you know, you're going to be looking at about 450 quid for the part, and probably about 600 quid to have it all fitted. So you're looking at about a thousand pounds to have that all done. So just factor that into the price. So we're at the front of the vehicle, and we're going to come in here inside the front wheel arch, and that area there is called the front outrigger. Now. That supports the bulkhead and that comes off the chassis. Now, quite often you'll find that there'll be corrosion in here on the front surface. There might have been patched on the top. Uh, water tends to run down into this area and that is a suspect. Now, again, that can be cut off and re-welded on. You can have it patched, um, but try and make sure it's sound. Try and make sure it's in good condition. If it's been welded, just make sure it's had a, a decent job done. Now, you can also notice on this vehicle here, we've got some uh, oxidization, which is where the aluminium probably got some water or some mud trapped behind it and it's starting to seep through the aluminium and causing the paint to come off. Now in real extreme cases there can be little perforations there um, and you do find them all over the vehicle but again if they're rubbed down and treated um, it's, it's not too much of a problem you can get around that but um, if you've got holes they're very hard to because the aluminium panels are so thin they're very hard to actually uh, repair flush you know it's uh, you have to actually bond something to the back of the panel then you've got to fill the hole that was uh, created by rubbing it all down and it's not it's not pretty and so that's why you'll see a lot of these vehicles especially with these sills have had checker plate fitted and the higher the checker plate goes up the more they've been abused in mud the more uh, moistures pass through the panels and the more problems you're going to have in the future so if you can get one without checker plate that is the best so a little dents like this in the, uh, the bulkhead are caused by the doors being opened and uh, catching the wind or the check straps not being in place and they're going to put little dents in there. Not, again, not a problem. You could live with that or you can just fill it and uh, smooth it off and they look fine. But um, just be aware that it's not covering a hole. What you might find is further down the vehicle, if you've got a bulkhead problem, you're going to find that this area here, right at the bottom of the bulkhead, underneath the hinge, that's actually going to be that might have a hole in it or be, uh, it will be filled. That's a prone area where all, again, it's where mud and moisture collects at the bottom of the bulkhead, underneath here, and uh, you'll start to get some, cor some corrosion showing through. So a lot of areas to look at. But if you just follow this guide a little bit, and uh, I'll just whiz around now quickly and do like a 10 point checklist for things that you need to check when you're going to view a potential defender to purchase. So the first thing to check is the bulkhead. Make sure that if there's any holes in here, um, they haven't been bodged and also check at the back of the bulkhead to make sure how bad the corrosion is if it's been covered up by a repair. Check your outriggers uh, to make sure that they've been repaired properly or they're sound and uh, in good shape and no unsightly holes that have been covered up. Also check your turrets. Now these can corrode as well, all down to mud, make sure they're okay. Wing tops. If you don't want checker plate and it's fitted, you'll have to live with it. You can't get around that. If it's got holes in it now, they're there to stay. Your chassis number, check on your VIN plate, mounted on your servo there, um, check the number and then make sure it matches your, your chassis stamp on there. If it's not there, if it's covered up, ask them to remove it so you can check it. It's really, really important. Going into the vehicle, footwells are always a problem. So make sure, especially this area here underneath the dash where water will have run through and started corrosion, make sure that's not too bad. These footwells, they can be really bad. If you've got holes in there, you have to have them repaired properly as a firewall. That's your MOT. You can't just sort of uh, stick a bit of plastic over or a floor mat. They've got to be solid. And then working away to the back, the rear cross member, check from the inside out to make sure that it's not unsightly. You want to also check the corrosion on the inside of these mounts for the springs where the mud traps if you've got mud on there ask permission just to remove that mud with a screwdriver so you can check the integrity of the chassis and then moving right to the back always check the rear cross member for botched repairs or for a cover-up uh, and make sure that if you're going to be towing it's all real solid and it's all real good and then ultimately you can just do a quick check to make sure it's not had any severe knocks they're all quite boxy these vehicles so make sure that you've got good lines along the vehicle and everything's sound and then you should be uh, good to go. Okay this is Fraser from Rugged Guide signing off and I hope you enjoyed the top tips for uh, your buying guide for your next vendor. If you uh, enjoyed what you saw please subscribe and like and uh, we'll see you again soon.